Hey everyone, my name is Ben Grist and welcome back to another video. Today we're doing another biblical word study. It's another ancient Greek word, that's right, it's homothumadon. Isn't that saying crazy which says two heads are better than one? Or maybe it's not crazy, maybe I'm the crazy one. But when you think about this whole Brexit situation, do you really think that two uh, differing mindsets equally matched trying to battle it out to diminish one another is really the best option? Even in our church congregations, it's so easy to fall out with one another. When we come along and bring different perspectives, it's so easy to uh, find separation in our differences. But then you read something like Acts chapter 4 and verses 42 to 47 and you realise what the early church was really like. One of the words mentioned in this passage when thinking about being of one accord is this word homothumidon. So what is it? Well, it's an adverb, it's Strong's number 3661, and it's often translated as with one mind or one accord or even one passion. It comes from two root words, the first being homo, meaning the same or together, and thumos, meaning passion. So basically, when we put the two words together, we create something like of the same passion. It's shown up about 11 times in the Bible. For example, Acts chapter 1, verse 14. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. Acts chapter 2, verse 46. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple. And Acts 5, verse 12. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And one verse that I love is from Acts chapter 4, verse 24, which starts off, Hoide accusantes homothumadon eran fornen proston theon, which roughly translates as having heard with one accord or one passion, homothumadon, they lifted up their voice or a voice singular as one to God. An American New Testament scholar called Daryl Bock once claimed that this word referred to a group acting as one and we see several examples of this in the Bible in the context of prayer. For example, in Acts chapter 1 verse 14, 4 verse 24, and probably 2.46 as well. The theological dictionary of the New Testament suggests that homothumadon is a response to God's action for the community and the world. And then it goes on to say, it is thus a gift of God to the praise of God. If you were to think of a modern day example, how incredible would it be if everyone was unanimous in their decision making, that everyone agreed with each other. Imagine having a government where they represented the people, but also they were one in heart and mind. They had the same thoughts and they all agreed on the same policies. But then I guess it could be quite scary because it could be used for evil. And we see examples for this even in the Bible where people were one in passion for evil. For example, in Acts chapter seven, verse 57, and also in chapters 18 and 19. For us as Christians, homothumadon goes one step further insofar as to suggest not only that we are one in heart and mind, but also that our hearts and minds are one in Christ. That we as a body of believers are working together for the same common purpose. Just as we heard in Acts chapter two, verse 46, they shared this God produced unity, not only in their actions, but also in their thoughts and even in their passions. So far as to suggest that they had the same mind. Their thoughts were God's thoughts, each received through the revelation of his word. Homothumadon describes such incredible harmony of views and feelings, tied in with such singleness of purpose. No divisions, no divided interests, no separate purposes. And so, this word, homothumadon. For us, it paints a picture of a system, a way of living life, of governing the world, of living for God, wholly united, all thinking as one, where we are all spurred on towards the goal through the race marked out for us, and all with the same passion. That's all we got time for today, I'm afraid. But if you like this video, there's another word in the passages that we've been looking at today, which is all on the theme of unity, and it's this word koinonia. So if you wanna check out that, there's a video here, but don't forget to like and subscribe this video. But that's all from me today, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.